What city is safest for the villains in the DC universe? Is it Gotham City, a place with lots of chaos, or perhaps Metropolis always being attacked? The answer might be surprising. The story begins at a villain's poker night. Some of the villains are discussing why they avoid cities like Gotham and Metropolis because they are too chaotic and have strong heroes. However, two villains argue that Coast City, where the Green Lanterns are based, is a decent place for criminal activities because the Green Lanterns are usually in space and not on Earth. They also mention Hub City, where heroes mainly focus on organized crime and don't bother with other crimes. Then, another villain interrupts them and expresses doubts about Central City being tough. He believes it's all just hype. The other villains are shocked by this and respond, Are you crazy? Central City is the worst of them all. They proceed to explain why Central City is a challenging place for villains. One of the villains begins to explain why major villains like the Joker avoid messing with Central City. They recall an incident when the Joker thought the city would be an easy target. He had all his Joker henchmen prepared and was ready for a big performance. However, as the Joker gas began to flow, the Scarlet Speedster, the Flash, suddenly appeared. The Flash created a vacuum to divert the Joker gas away from the city safely and flung the Joker in the direction of Gotham. The Joker was never seen in Central City again. Another villain chimes in with another story, saying, that's nothing. Have you ever heard of the Condiment King? Well, he once attempted to rob the main bank in Central City. He made it only as far as the bank's lobby, armed with ketchup and mustard guns. But in the blink of an eye, he found himself stranded in a desert in the middle of Africa. It took him over a year to finally make his way back home. But the bad guy still isn't convinced. So, they mention two kids who are even scarier to encounter. The boy has super strength like Superman because he once tossed a huge object into the water like skipping a stone. The girl named Thunderheart can hit you 90 times before you can even blink and likes to play pranks like giving people big wedgies just for fun. After discussing the scary kids, they talk about some other flashes and how tough they are. One of them starts a story about Mordru, the wizard from another planet. Mordru's power is that he can travel anywhere in space and time. One day, he decided to visit Central City. While he was walking around, a little girl stuck her tongue out at him. Because of his self-esteem issues, Mordru took the little girl's lollipop. But this turned out to be a huge mistake because he did it in front of the Flash. The Flash just wagged his finger, indicating that Mordru shouldn't have done that. Afraid, Mordru jumped to another dimension to escape the Flash. But he wasn't safe because, somehow, the Flash kept finding him. Mordru tried jumping again and again, but each time, the Flash was right there. In desperation, Mordru teleported to the very end of time and space, thinking the Flash couldn't possibly find him there. However, to his astonishment, the Flash walked up behind him and extended his hand, demanding the lollipop. Just imagine being chased all across time and space for a lollipop. It was utterly unbelievable, and Mordru was never quite the same after that experience. The villain, despite hearing these incredible stories, believes that they're all just pulling his leg. He can't fathom that these tales are true because the rogues still continue to battle the Flash. However, others argue that the rogues persist because they're a bit unhinged. One adds that Batman will break you, Superman will imprison you, but the Flash will take the time to talk to you which they consider the worst kind of punishment, to be reminded that you can be better. Still, the villain insists that they must be joking because all the money they've been playing with was stolen from the bank next to the Flash Museum. Hearing this, all the villains panic, rushing to collect their belongings. Then a knock is heard at the door, and all the villains become anxious, assuming it's the Flash. However, one villain thinks they're just being paranoid, believing it's the pizza delivery guy instead. At the door stands the Flash, politely asking if they wouldn't mind having a little chat before he takes them all into custody for the night. 